What's going to happen is the arrow is going to be pointed the direction of the air. Now, on most systems, the direction of the air is towards the furnace. I was asking the question, how do you know you're putting your filter in the correct way? Filters are, it's current filters like this that are higher quality will have uh, directional arrows, okay? The, the directional arrows are not just um, suggestions. The main reason there's an arrow is because when you're trying to pull air through a section, and again, it's gonna have a filter which is gonna create a restriction and increase pressure. So what happens is, is this filter wants to fold in. It wants to kind of push in there. And you don't want the filter to get sucked into the, to the blower compartment, it can damage parts inside the furnace. So the arrow is facing the direction that the air is flowing. These metal pieces here keep the structural integrity of the filter. Okay. So what's gonna happen is the arrow is gonna be pointed the direction of the air. Now, on most systems, the direction of the air is towards the furnace. So you'll have the return coming down and bending into the furnace, and then the blower motor is blowing air up and into the uh, ductwork. Now, in other cases, it'll come from the top and blow down, but it's still pointed towards the furnace. Just like this one would, the arrow pointing down, the arrow pointing this way, or if it's coming from the floor up, pointing towards the furnace in each way. Now, in cases like these, which would be cheaper filters, less restrictive, they can go in either way. There's really no airflow arrow on this particular filter, but you can see both sides are made exactly the same. They have these pieces of cardboard in here to hold the, the uh, structural integrity. But again, you really wanna stay away from these they're gonna catch about 2% of dust and dirt because remember 98% of particles are smaller than the eye can see. This here, I can see right through it. So I would really stay away from these and look into a little better filtration, but also take into account restriction. That's right. where your air cleaners come in. I get questions a lot like, no, what exactly what MERV rating do you use or <laughs> whatever? Do you yes. have one that you typically will kind of go towards? Yeah, well, I mean, if you're going to ask me, I'm going MERV 16 to 18, which is an air cleaner. Oh, I So see. Okay. the MERV rating is a rating designed for particle collection, but also airflow. So filtration is two parts. A lot of people think, I just want to catch as much as physically possible. Just get all the allergens, the dust and dirt out of it. But a lot of people do not take into account how restrictive these filters can be. So for example, if you get a super porous filter, you're gonna let everything through. If you get a piece of cardboard, you're gonna let nothing through. But you can't move air through a car piece of cardboard, right? Or a piece of plywood. So best of both worlds is an air cleaner because it can clean high amount of particle, the smallest particles, down to 0 0.003 microns, really, really small, and uh, but not be restrictive because the filter itself is porous, but it's electronically charged, so it can catch and change polarity of dust. Now, if you're gonna go with paper filters, most commonly is MERV 8 to MERV 13. Now, like I said, you can get HEPA filters, things like that, but they're going to be restrictive, right? So generally HEPA systems are kind of pulling air separately and cleaning it and then dumping it back into the return and not completely restricting the blower motor itself. But MERV 8 to 13 to answer your question on paper filters, the higher the MERV rating, the more it catches, but the more restrictive it is until you get into the air cleaners. And then as 16 to 18, you're going to get into more electronic air cleaners and higher uh, dust reduction. Cool, thanks.